As we wind down on our first season, we've traveled a lot through the solar system, but for our next object, we're going to have to go roughly 240,000 miles away. It appears nearly identical to the size of the sun in our sky, and is the second brightest visible object to us. Sitting almost 239,000 miles away, our moon has had a huge influence on the Earth. The moon affects our ocean tides. The gravitational pull of the moon and the sun makes the water in the oceans bulge, causing a continuous change between high and low tide. At new moon and full moon, the gravitational force of the sun and the moon act together and create spring tides. The giant impact hypothesis, sometimes called the big splash or the Thea impact, suggests that the moon formed out of debris left over from a collision between Earth and an astronomical body the size of Mars approximately four and a half billion years ago, 200 million years after the solar system had formed. Thea strikes the Earth. Intense heat is created by the impact, and huge amounts of debris from both Thea and the Earth are thrown into space. The debris coalesces as it orbits the Earth. The moon is formed from the debris and begins to orbit the Earth. It's been living in harmony with our planet ever since. The moon is tidally locked with the Earth, so we only see one side. Because the moon is reflected sunlight, our view of the moon changes over the course of 28 days. During the new moon, the side of the moon facing us is not illuminated by the sun. At this time, the moon is not up at night, but it is up during the day. We just can't see it. The first phase is called the waxing crescent. It begins to show up low in the night sky right after sunset. Seven days after the new moon, the moon is in its first quarter. Only half of it is visible for the first half of the evening, and then it sets. After the first quarter, the moon appears to grow into a gibbous shape and heads into what is called the waxing gibbous. Now, we've hit the full moon. During this phase, the sun lights up the entire surface of the moon that faces the Earth. It rises just as the sun sets and disappears beneath the western horizon when the sun rises the next morning. After the appearance of the full moon, the lunar shape starts to wane and gets smaller. In reverse, the same phases happen, except that they're called a waning gibbous, last quarter, and the waning crescent, to finally the new moon again, and the cycle repeats. When it was discovered that the moon was a different world within the reach of the Earth, the idea of going to the moon was just a fantasy. But as time moved on, that fantasy slowly became a reality. And then in 1962, United States President John F. Kennedy declared to the world his intention to do the impossible. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. And so, mankind went to the moon.
For many decades, we would learn so much about the moon, and many rovers and landers from other space agencies would go visit. Then recently, the Chinese National Space Administration sent the Chang'e 4 lander to the moon and successfully landed it on January 3rd, 2019. The mission will measure chemical compositions of lunar rocks and soils. It would also measure the lunar surface temperature over its one-year mission duration. The mission will measure the chemical composition of lunar rocks and soils. It will also measure the lunar surface temperature for the duration of its mission. It will also carry out low-frequency radio astronomical observations and utilize a radio telescope. It will also observe the solar corona and explore the evolution and transport of coronal mass injections between the Sun and the Earth. It is our closest neighbor at 239,000 kilometers away from us. One second. There. That's better. Reaching the moon would cost about $10 billion. An additional range of 28 to 52 billion would be spent on the construction of base-related structures. That's a lot of money and a lot of uncertainty. Who would want to invest in all that? But it would seem like the next frontier. We have astronauts sleep and live in orbit for vast periods of time. Living on the moon would be that next step. When I was a kid, we'd imagine vacations on the moon, visiting moon cities, sinking golf balls in small moon craters. It seemed logical for the future. And here I am, in my 30s, and humans haven't been there in nearly 50 years. The Chinese have pledged to have the first moon base by 2030. What will it look like? Will others follow the Chinese? Will it simply be like the International Space Station? Will we implement lunar cities? Will we make a commercial space travel destination? Whatever it may become, it will play a huge role in the future of space exploration. From lunar bases, to high and low tides, to eclipse phenomena, the moon has been there for mankind to look up and wander. It has provided and inspired, and will continue to do so for millions of years to come. Until next time, be curious, be creative, and always look up. Gonna play Neptune in the afternoon To Pluto we go for the evening show A goodbye wave to the distant sun We're off to play music in the Milky Way